how are we doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. So today's, I don't know what we call these episodes or, oh, I have already poured some Jefferson. Good for me. So that's good stuff. I want to talk a little bit about a closed or or lost in time ride known as the Disneyland with a view liner. And it ran from mid 57, uh, June of 57 into the September of 58. Very brief period. But before we get to that, I thought it was important to talk about the genesis of how the view liner came to be. And to do that, we've got to talk a little bit about a GM project known as the Aerotrain. So let's go back to 1955. You ready? Brace for it. 1955. Okay. The Aerotrain. GM, uh, uh, their electromotor division, the EMD, uh, introduced uh, the Aerotrain in about 1955. And uh, this project was headed by a cat named Chuck Jordan. Now, the goal of this was to lure the general public back to um, railroads, tra- traveling by, the, by, by rail, uh, you know, obviously to try to keep it inexpensive for both consumer and, and railroad companies in general. But before we get there, here, take a look at, um, take a look at these photos and a super short video um, it'll kind of show you how cool this train actually actually looked, at least a locomotive. Uh, let's take a look. Ready? Right, pretty freaking cool looking train. Now, part of the reason GM was tasked with this was, was you know, cars in 1955, private vehicles and stuff were really starting to take off and were building, you know, Eisenhower's, all, all the infrastructure, the super highways, freeway systems, you know, Route 66, Interstate 5, all, all, all across the country, th- this is really starting to happen. Disneyland itself, the 5 was going to be blowing right past Anaheim. It was one of the reasons that spot was chosen. One of the reasons. But anyway, so GM is, decides to build this, this aero train. Now, part of the problem they've got is GM being the cheap bastards that they are, the company as a whole, spent as little money as humanly possible, and I'm sure it's because they wanted to make sure the top brass got as big a bonus as humanly possible, which really in 70 years, nothing, nothing has changed. Why, why set out and build a better tomorrow and really make an investment when you could rob the bins of, hmm, Greyhound, because the uh, coach division of GM was already building Greyhound buses for them. So they took, they took literal buses for the coaches where people would ride in and kind of modified those. And all the appliances and, and, and things inside of the Aerotrain were products already being used by Frigidaire, also owned by GM. So... Um, two trains were basically built uh, in total, and like, as we said, they looked they look really, really cool, but their bigger problem was the rides were terrible, and they were poorly designed locomotives. Um, they were using an experimental electric diesel or diesel electric engine that uh, didn't work very well, and they were disliked by the public and railroad companies uh, alike. 
So they, they ended up being basically a massive failure. And I believe in part because they tried to do it as cheaply as humanly possible. It's a mistake. But anyway, a couple of cool things came out of it. First cool thing, check this out. This is the Varney Aerotrain HO scale. Huh? Look at this, an original box. Now it says 1967 on it. I, I don't honestly know when this came out, but, but take a look at how cool this is. Uh, 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 the little bit of research that I've done, this was the more reasonably priced train set as there were no tracks included. It is just a train, a couple of passenger cars and the caboose. But as you can see, hopefully you can see here, I'll take this out. It, it, it certainly captures the spirit of uh, the aero train. It's got a couple of, again, a couple of passenger cars and the caboose here at the end, but uh, I managed to acquire this. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I just thought it was really, really cool. Uh, one good thing. Now, the second good thing that came out of the aero train was Disneyland was looking for a temporary ride um, in like 1957. And what had happened was the, uh, the Mickey Mouse Club Theater, which had that big circus, was moving out of Fantasyland and into, we did a video just a couple weeks ago, Holidayland, which reminds me, check this out. Look what I got my hands on. Here is a Holidayland for, uh, uh, what was it? Hughes Tool Company Aircraft Division had a little party uh, October the 18th, 1959. This is a side note, sorry, I'm gonna digress for a minute. But you'll probably never see another one of these. But anyway, that circus tent moved to Holidayland in 1957, making way for the view liner, which they knew was gonna be temporary. And Bob Gurr ended up basing uh, the view liner off of the aero train. Take a look at this. Uh, Bob Gurra, an Imagineer, you know who he is. Here is his sort of concept sketch. Actually, I think this is McKim's uh, concept sketch, and Bob Gurr had to go build it. And it looks very much like the Aero Train. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, well, I'll show you those in a second. But anyway, they built two trains. Uh, there was the Tomorrowland train, which was orange, and the cars were named after planets. And then the second train was blue, and it was named after characters. Now these trains, again, they took McKim's uh, uh, sketch here, and Bob Gurr was tasked with actually creating it. And what they did was they took a, a Olds rocket, Oldsmobile Rocket 88 motor, a V8 motor. They put that in the locomotive. They used a Jeep transmission. I think they did something to make it like an eight-speed. Uh, and oddly enough, Oldsmobile actually provided a windshield uh, for the train. It opened um, uh, June 26, 1957, and it closed September the 15th, 1958. Um, and they closed it because they wanted to make way for the Matterhorn, the submarine voyage, and of course a monorail, which really was the true future, I guess, mode of transportation, as well as the people mover. But take a look, um, take a look at this, uh, a, a couple of videos here of the Viewliner in action. And when you come back, I'll show you some of the cool shit that I've got. Go ahead, let's take a look. This is the Tomorrowland station of the Santa Fe and Disneyland Viewliner, the fastest miniature train in the world and one of the newest additions to the Magic Kingdom. The streamlined Viewliner will take you on a round-trip tour of both Fantasyland and Tomorrowland, over the trestles and bridges of the Whitewater Rapids and Tomorrowland Lake. The Viewliner, the only train of its kind in the world, speeds past Lookout Mountain, Junior Autopia, over Fantasyland River, and circles through Tomorrowland on its return journey to this depot. Trains leave every few minutes. If you are using a coupon book, just tear out your B coupon 
and present it to the conductor on the station platform. Individual ride tickets may be obtained at the central ticket booth located just beyond the Astrojet. This is the Tomorrowland station of the Santa Fe and Disneyland Viewliner, a train built on the principle of an interurban express of the future. Its low center of gravity and articulated cars enable the Viewliner to maneuver curves at high speeds. Scale, one half of full size. At 30 miles an hour, the Viewliner travels the equivalent of 120 miles per hour in a full-scale train. Onboarding the Viewliner, you speed off on a round-trip journey through both Fantasyland and Tomorrowland. Just tear out your B coupon, B as in bashful, and present it to the conductor on the station platform. Or you may purchase individual ride tickets at the central ticket booth located a few steps away between Autopia and the Astrojet. Cash is not accepted on the Viewliner. cool right P pretty interesting on the whole now you already saw um, the, the view liner concept art and I managed to acquire I think I'm gonna put these in a shadow box you know a couple of pictures of uh, the view liner in action here you just saw some videos so these are probably a little boring but it gives you an idea but check this out uh, I'll show you this first here's an original B ticket and if you look there, you'll see the view liner. Where is it at? Fantasy Line View Liner. Second one from the bottom under Fantasy Land. You see that? I actually have a couple more tickets coming. This is from 1958, and I've got one from 1957 coming that actually mentioned the view liner. Super rare, super hard to find. Uh, and then in 1998, there was actually uh, a button, a series of buttons that were produced and I have this button that shows off the view liner as well. I'm going to put all this in a shadow box, I think. Again, this sort of combines my my new passion of trains with my passion for Disneyland and I just wanted to share a little bit. Hopefully you got a kick out of those those old films uh, showing the view liner in action. I wish I could have ridden it. Unfortunately, those locomotives were kept in storage for a while. From what I understand, Disneyland tried to sell them to Dodger Stadium as a way to, in the parking lot, use them as a, a tram. Apparently the Dodgers weren't interested. They were, they were kept in storage for years until the 70s, and then some hooplehead decided to just scrap and destroy them, which is a shame. But I thought it was something we wanted to share I love the idea that GM created the, even though it was a debacle of, of, of uh, epic scale, I'm sure uh, uh, Chuck was not too pleased with the, with the end result, but it was a beautiful, super cool train. I believe at least one of those trains, uh, that image is in, in St. Louis at the Transportation Museum. I think they restored it, which is awesome. I think it's super cool that I found this. I spared no expense and, and, and got this. This won't work with the train uh, diorama that I'm building because that's O scale. This is HO scale. But I just like, anybody who knows me knows I like having crap. Got it. Find one if you can. I think it's in pretty good shape. I've got I to gotta do a little bit more investigation on that. And like I said, I, I'm super excited about these tickets. Uh, I'm going to create some sort of a 
shadow boxer. I, I know what I'm going to do. Anyway, hope you got a kick out of watching this. Hope you learned a little something. I, I love digging into this stuff. Um, and again, like those old videos, I think that's pretty cool. But in this world, when you can be anything, be kind, be humble, and be forgiving. Thanks for watching. Tell your friends to subscribe. I think I've got like 233 uh, uh, subscribers, which is amazing. Let's try to get to 250. Get, get some of your friends. Just tell them to subscribe. I, you know, I want you to watch, but at least just sort of subscribe. Let's see if we can get to 250 before the end of the year. Anyway, have a great day. We'll talk at you later. Bye.